friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I know this is a weekend where I'm supposed to be doing a live, but I'm not doing a live this weekend because I am not at home. So I instead, I'm gonna do an extra weekend vlog this weekend because, turn around, Rachel, turn around. Cause I'm at my mom's house. There's the mom. Oh, I didn't comb my hair yet. It's all right, there's the Rach. And we're gonna go do some thrift stores and Salvation Army, well, that's a thrift store. And just drive around and see what we find today. I made them take off the day of work <laughs> so they could hang out with me. <laughs> so, and then we're doing a game night tonight. Yep. Yeah, so I thought we would just take you along for the ride this weekend. And tomorrow I'm going to Binghamton to see my friend's daughters in a play. And then I'll stop in Lancaster on the way home on Sunday. So we'll see. Lots of fun things going on this weekend. I'm not sure how much reading I'm going to get done. I did bring flashback with me keeper of the lost cities i also brought dear mrs bird with me i need to read that for patreon and i have to start another audiobook because i finished one on the way up here yesterday so i'll keep you posted <laughs> So far, success. In that bookstore, they had so many and I gave myself a 10 minute limit because these two are not the greatest. Like they don't care about buying books like I do. <laughs> but I just got The Second Life of Muriel West for $2. This one somebody mentioned in one of my lives recently and very excited about it. I got a paperback of Anxious People because that's what all my other Bachmans are is paperback. So now I can give away my hardcover. I got a paperback of Pull of the Stars. Gonna do the same thing and give away my hardcover. Hey patrons, oh, yeah, yeah. they're coming your way. She wants to go in here first. Yeah, a Mary Kubica book, which I haven't read her in a really long time, but I have liked, just kind of thrillery type. And then this one is about Afghanistan, which I've just read Sparks Like Stars and loved it. And so this one sounded really good. This one was $3. And then one for book exchange. So yay, successful, $15 for one, two, three, four, five, six books that are in brand new condition. Super happy Krista. What are you reading? Just a book. Get out of here. What book are you reading? Something about the red button, blue button. The blue star? The blue star. The woman with the blue star. The woman with the blue star. <laughs> Had a very successful thrifty shopper trip. I got some workout clothes and two pairs of jeans and a lunch box. <laughs> and I'm in New York now and they don't give you bags for anything. <laughs> Nowhere, you gotta pay for your own bags. Ridiculous. Now we're at this like antique co-op place. It's like filled with all these different sections. It's so fun to look around. Fun, fun. Green outside by the water. <laughs> Freezing our tushies off. But that's Lake Ontario. It's not exactly summer weather, but summer food. <laughs> we got a little cold, so we came to finish in the car, but it's not gonna stop us from getting ice cream. No, it's not. <laughs> we just ate Rudy's. Rudy's. I'm very happy because they had my favorite ice cream ever. Dark mm. chocolate ice cream with minty swirl. Rachel, what did you get? I forgot. Nutty bonbon. Oh yeah. 
It has Bavarian cream ice cream with peanut butter stuff in it, like a peanut butter cup I type of a thing. Them, yeah. it's right there peanut butter truffle thing candy and peanut butter swirl and then mom got her chocolate vanilla twist her favorite i'm reading a book she's reading her book on my kindle we're at a game night well not yet we're going to be at a game night we <laughs> came they show up we came early to help set up but they're not here yet but you guys know how i love games too so that should be fun Mom, how are you liking the woman with the blue star? It goes back and forth. I haven't figured it out yet. It does between the two different girls. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like only a quarter, not even a quarter of the way through. Yeah, you'll get it. I'll get it. You'll get it. I'll get it. Is that the one where they live in the sewers? They're living in the sewer. That's so gross. That's gross. And her dad dies. He goes down the sewer. Shh. That's a spoiler. And her mom's pregnant. Yeah, don't say all the things. You're giving away the whole story. <laughs> no, that's all at the beginning. Spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> and I read a couple chapters of Flashback, which is Keeper of the Lost Cities book seven. And it's very fast paced and very exciting. But I didn't read much. We just had a little interlude at home, relaxing, making brownies and salad to bring tonight sitting on the couch painting my this nails. This one was relaxing. I painted my nails. You took a little a little rest oh, I did. for I half an hour. I did keep talking to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We should nail polish remover. Rachel slept. How come you don't have some with acetone in it? <laughs> Jeekers. <laughs> Rachel is at work. She's going to be joining us here later. This is a singles event. We're going to see if they're all mom's age or my age. It won't be Rachel's age. She'll be the baby. She's the young one. There'll be a bunch of old farts. I'll we'll see. We'll one. see how it goes. Yeah. All right, bye. We're here. Dan and our mom's singles group. Oh. 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 We had the spaghetti with medicine meat. It was delicious. Well, I mean, I didn't know the spam spinach pastry pockets. Larry, what? Hey. Rachel knows people. Oh, sorry. Apparently, Rachel knows people. <laughs> Video proof. Do that. Okay. There you go. Ma? <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. Is, are we all the way? Yeah. Oh, what is that hand switching business? I'm still doing one hand. Cheating. It's not cheating. Cheating. No, it's do you not. Want to Okay. I'm not very good at making no, words. Yeah, right here. Are you kidding me? Gotta watch that Mitzi though. I thought that in a weird way too. Yeah. I like just pulled it out. I can like fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, and then slow mo when it falls down. That would be wicked. That'd be sweet, actually. As long as it doesn't. As long as it doesn't fall like towards the camp, towards the phone. That would still be a good shot though. Mm -hmm. Somebody is clearly trying to get a hold of somebody. Oh, the phone yeah. keeps going off. Oh. <laughs> you gotta do a tap. You, you gotta tap. Time to shake the table. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Something smells good though. Is that the tea with the coffee? What is this? Is this that ginger? Mm -hmm. Oh, that smells so good. That's really delicious. What do you have? Tea or something going on? Do you want some tea? Yeah. Ah, it won't come out. It won't come out. It's going to fall. Does this smell good? Ginger or. Do you want anything there? Just coffee? Oh! With your fingers. Oh, I should have took this cowl neck off. It's gonna get in my way. Oh, it smells good. Oh, I want this one. Black key. Should I do the mint mud then? What? Deep pour detox. I'm, I'm using this one. <laughs> this says apply an even layer to face. Breathe. <laughs> Let dry completely, then rinse away with warm washcloth. Oh. Breathe. 
shake it back behind your ear. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, I like this. I want more. This smells good. It's mint. Is this like getting my dead skin spots? <laughs> it's like peeling. See it? Oh, cool. Oh, this is an ouchy one. See? It says breathe, though. I gotta... Oh, no, this is an ouchie. I have to let it dry completely. Yeah, see, I couldn't do it. This one hurts. Ouch. It smells good. This one's an only 30 second one. You're supposed to just rub it around for 30 seconds and rinse. So I really think this is dead skin. Mom, look at all the dead skin. To help remove skin impurities, such as dead skin for a clear and smooth skin. Wow. Nice. How oh, do you feel? I feel good. How do you feel now that we've done a mask? Great, fantastic, wonderful, glorious, smooth as a baby's bottom. Stop touching it. Feel mine too. I want to touch your face. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, it's kind of a tradition. It's a tradition for us to do face masks together. So we just did ones. I did a mud one and she did a peeling black okay. tea one. Goodbye. Okay. And now we're going to bed, but I probably won't see Rachel in the morning because I'm Good leaving night, at 730. And she's not a morning person. All right. That's it for today. Talk to you tomorrow. So I'm at my friend's, I'm at my friend Joy's house. Um, I, you saw them in my video last weekend when I went to DC. The girls are getting ready for their play. Yes, we are. Hi. All three of them. Well, not Joy, but the little, <laughs> the little one behind Joy. They're in a play today and I'm going to go see it. But every time I come, we make monkey bread and just look at how delicious this stuff is. It's like biscuits and honey and brown sugar and butter and deliciousness and lots of love. You can walk behind me. That's fine. <laughs> it's become a tradition. I feel like almost every time I come. Not quite every time, but almost. I bring some of the stuff and we make monkey bread because it's so yummy. It's the pre-show. Pre-show, Megan. Hi. Just stage makeup? <laughs> yep. Oh, I don't want to walk out here. Pre-show, Emily. Little bumblebee with her floofy pigtails. <laughs> and pre-show, Kate. Here we go. Stage makeup on? <laughs> yeah. Cutesy patootsies. <laughs> we gotta go like this. <laughs> Please, George, I think we should hear it. absolutely love going to theater and it does not matter what age group the theater is for. This afternoon I just went to see my friend's kids. Her, all three of her girls were in Mary Poppins Jr. and it was so cute. It was so stinking cute. And now I'm going into a Barnes & Noble. It's right behind me. I just pulled up to meet up with 
another booktuber, Mother Goose Librarian, Amy Lynn. She has been a subscriber of mine for a long time and then she just recently started her own channel and I'm so proud of her and I'm so excited I get to meet her face to face. Yay! So I'm at a Barnes and Noble and I found a friend Hi. and her I mean, lovely husband her. too. I don't have to <laughs> no, it's a video. Picture. It's a video. So it's okay now you're in it. You're in the video. I found Amy Lynn. Yay! Hi. Morning, it's Sunday, and I'm here with my cousin. We're headed to church. I just bought this shirt for seven dollars at Walmart. This pink and white striped, you can't really see because of the sunshine. But I just got myself a new spring shirt because it's a beautiful spring day here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's already yep. 58 and sunny, 58 and sunny, and it's going to get up to the 70s by the afternoon. We're going to church right now, and then we're going to go to our favorite little place to eat called Rachel's Crepery Cafe and Crepery. Now, I think maybe, but. It's so good. Yeah. They just renovated so you get to check out the new coffee, oh, they did? The new coffee bar area. Sweet. All right. Bye. <laughs> Blackbird and a Nutella and a cousin. <laughs> Hello friends, it is Sunday evening at 6.30 and I just got home. <laughs> I just drove four, four and a half hours and I'm just getting home. On the way, I listened to Dear Mrs. Bird. I started it yesterday while I was driving and I finished it today. Oh man, I love that book so much. Gloria and so many others of you have told me how much I'm going to love it. And I really, really did. It is so, so good. So that was my audiobook that I finished. I did also on the way up to New York, I don't know if I mentioned, but I finished the love, the, not the love song. I always say that. The songbook of Benny Lament by Amy Harmon. And it's not my favorite of hers. Uh, actually, it's my least favorite of all of hers that I've read so far. I didn't care for that as much, but I read it. And this afternoon, I read a little bit of Keeper of the Lost Cities after, after church and lunch at the crepe place that we went to, we went back to Beth's house and I had a little rest for an hour. I just kind of dozed and read and dozed and read for about an hour before getting on the road. I wanted to just take a little bit of a break. So I read a couple chapters of Keeper of the Lost Cities, but now I need to go inside and do laundry and unpack and start editing this vlog <laughs> and just get caught up with mail and get ready for the week, plan out some lunches and things like that. I need to just get ready for the week because now it's back home and back to reality. It was a super busy, but so fun weekend getting to see family, my mom and my sister and my cousin. I got to see my friend Joy and her family and the girls play and got to go to some antique thrift stores and a bookstore and a lot of driving, but it just was a really, really nice weekend. I loved it. So back to reality. <laughs> this weekend was actually supposed to be a live weekend. I was thinking, I'm like, I'm home early enough. I could do one tonight, but I have too many other things that I need to do in order to feel ready for the week ahead. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to skip on the live tonight, but I'm home and now I need to clean out my car and get unpacked. I will probably check in one more time and just kind of finally wrap up. If I get any reading time into this evening, I'll talk about that a little bit more and what I'm going to start in this coming week. Anyways, I got to get going. Lots to do. All right. It is the end of the day on Sunday. I think it's like 1050. I need to get ready to go to bed because tomorrow's going to come quickly. I got two loads of laundry done. I got unpacked. My car's cleaned out. Feeling good. I read a little bit in Keeper of the Lost Cities and edited this video. So I feel like it was a pretty productive evening overall. <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to one more time run through. I don't think I talked very much about what the books were actually about. So I wanted to do that real quick here at the end and kind of tell you what's coming up for the week. But I did read about 100 pages of Keeper of the Lost Cities over the weekend. It is a middle grade. There's a long way to still go. I've only read this much so far. So that's going to be happening throughout this week. I'm buddy reading this with Amy's Bookish Life, Amy Bowman, and loving it. This is book seven. So I can't really tell you anything about it, except that it's very fast paced still. And I love the characters still. And there are new elements to the story that have been brought up already. And it's very exciting. Very exciting. 
So driving up north, I listened to the songbook of Benny Lament by Amy Harmon. I had started this, I think, last weekend uh, during book list backlist readathon. I absolutely love Amy Harmon. And this book was good, but not great. I only gave it three stars. It just wasn't, for some reason, not connecting with me. And I love books that have music in it. But for some reason, this one, I just didn't care for. So in this one, we follow Benny Lament, who is a very talented pianist and songwriter. And he writes songs for uh, bands and musicians. His family is part of the the mafia, the Italian mafia. It's set in the 1960s, mostly. Uh, his father takes him to this one club to hear this woman sing, Esther Mine, and she's amazing. She has a beautiful voice, young black woman, and, or like mixed race, I think. But he kind of is captivated by this woman. And Esther is a very strong-willed woman and kind of tracks down Benny and asks him to be her agent. And she plays in a band with her brothers. But then there's this whole backstory about Benny's dad, who was a boxer back in the day. And the guy that beat him uh, is connected to Esther somehow. And it just, there's a lot to deal with in this book. So we're dealing with the the mafia and the family and being part of the family and what does that mean? And Benny's dad was very, very involved with Uncle Sal, who's like the head of their family. <laughs> it also deals with the music side of thing, which is in the 1960s, uh, a combination of race and Esther singing as a black woman and and where she can sing and where she can't sing and all of that. But also the beginnings of kind of Motown. I don't know if it was the beginnings, but Motown Records, the beginning of Motown Records. Names like Ray Charles and others were in here as well. They actually meet Ray Charles at one point. So we deal with the beginning of that, but also the civil rights movement. It's the 1960s. And so race relations and, and civil rights events are talked about and referred to in here. So there's just a lot going on and it's a decently sized book. So and I don't feel like any one area was neglected over the others. It just was a lot. And I think partly what really gets me every time, Benny is described as a very big fella. He's burly and tall and just a big guy. And Esther Mine is teeny tiny. Itsy Bitsy. They even write a song called Itsy Bitsy. And I, as a tall girl, cannot stand it when a, such a big deal is made about how petite and tiny she is. And I know it's kind of like contrasted with her huge personality and her really big voice. And I guess there was a purpose to it because she's so small and so powerful at the same time. But it's just a pet peeve of mine because it was talked about over and over and over and over and over again. And I cannot stand that. Ugh. So that really turns me off to a book and it's the stupidest thing, but hey, it is what it is. I gave it three stars. It's not my favorite Amy Harmon. I probably will not keep it on my shelves, but I love some of her other ones. So it didn't put me off to reading more from her, but this one was not a hit for me. But what was a hit was the book that I listened to yesterday and today as I was heading back south, Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. Absolutely freaking lutely loved this book. <laughs> I feel like I talked about this one a lot, but it's not on this vlog because I was doing a vlog for my patrons because this is my patron pick for this month. But in this book, we follow Emmy, who wants to be a war correspondent. She's a young woman during World War II. She thinks she's getting a job at the newspaper, but it ends up being for a woman's magazine as a junior typist for Mrs. Bird, who writes a help column. But Mrs. Bird is very particular about the types of letters that she wants to respond to. But Emmy feels bad about some of the letters that don't get responded to. And she kind of takes matters into her own hands. And it kind of blows up in her face. But also on the side, Emmy works as a, a volunteer uh, as a phone attendant at the fire station. And we also follow her friendships, especially with her roommate Bunty. And it really just highlights life in London in the midst of the Blitz because this all takes place during the Blitz. But the tone of this, especially at the beginning, was pretty light, which was pretty cool. And just seeing how people had to or, or chose to at times just continue on with life and carry on with life and still have fun and still have a life 
in the midst of all these air raids and bombs and the desire to play a part for those who couldn't go off to fight, whether that's because of health issues or because they were women, the different roles that people would take at, on the home front. It did get pretty intense. I mean, I laughed and I cried in this book. I just absolutely loved it. I do feel like there's one storyline in particular that did not get wrapped up in here. And I know people don't love the sequel quite as much as this one, but I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel because I want to know what happens with that one storyline. I really liked the journey of the emotional journey that I went on while reading this. At the beginning, I just really loved Emmy's. I loved Emmy's character all the way through. She's not perfect. She's definitely flawed. She made some mistakes, but she's a good friend and she wants to be a good friend and she wants to do her part. Um, but I just, yeah, I loved the tone of this book and I'm very excited that I read it finally because it's been on my shelves for quite a while and Gloria gave me this copy way, way, way long ago. And thank you, Gloria. Oh my goodness. I loved this book. That is it for what I actually completed and read this weekend. Um, the next audiobook that I will be picking up is Transcendent Kingdom by Yaa Jesse. I really hope to finish this before the end of the month. And also, I'm still, I haven't picked up A Fine Romance in a few days, and I don't have very much left. So I would like to finish this one very soon as well. So that's what I'm going to be reading. And that's the end of this vlog. I need to wrap it up now. I hope that you enjoyed this a lot more activity and less reading on this one. So I hope that, that that you had fun hanging out with me and my mom and my sister and my cousin and my friends and their kids, seeing the play, all that jazz. I really appreciate you sticking around and watching. And I look forward to chatting with you in the comments as well as seeing you in another video very soon. Bye.